as summer commences, we see pictures of beach bods, home gardens, and tanning rituals. Which, sidebar, I've always found it odd that white Americans are so obsessed with tanning and simultaneously see black and brown people as lesser than. I mean, why look like the people you don't consider as people, right? And this is why racism doesn't make any sense. Anyway, the story you won't see on your Instagram feeds or covered on corporate mainstream news outlets, and yes, I'm using the term news very loosely here, is the story about the spike in homelessness we are about to see in America. In a 5-4 decision, the Supreme Court has decided to extend the evictions moratorium by an extra month, so basically till the end of July 2021. Good. I mean, now the American populace finally has enough time to pay back thousands and thousands of dollars worth of back rent on a minimum wage income. And according to American math, which most mathematicians don't consider as math, says that's possible if the working class never stops working. Okay, ca capitalism is so awful that it's fucking up math for everyone. The linchpin in this decision was none other than Big Boy Beer's Brett Kavanaugh himself. I was just as shocked as you likely are to hear that Kavanaugh, the conservative judge with an alleged rape charge, was looking out for the people for about an extra 30 days. And this is because, according to American math, which I remind you, mathematicians don't consider as real math, says that they only have a limited amount of compassion, right? And and for big boy beers, Brett Kavanaugh's, uh, his compassion is directly correlated with the amount of beers he has. It's a it's a bell curve of beers for him, right? There's There's a maximum that he can drink to maximize his compassion, and then anything anything beyond that uh, will just lead him to bring out his calendar his dad gave him and say, the rent is due! Now, Kavanaugh's argument was that the evictions that are due to happen are going to cause chaos. And as he said this, a resounding no fucking shit was heard across the land. Uh, I believe we can call that the profanity heard around the world. Look, millions of Americans are on the verge of homelessness. 30 extra days to settle a massive debt is nothing more than a band-aid on a car crash. Kavanaugh's decision puts the onus on Congress to come up with a solution. And Congress could have stopped all this from happening had they passed a bill to cancel all rents and mortgages throughout the pandemic. And before everyone starts screaming, what about the small landlords in alternating caps, which is a very annoying way to have your voice, uh, canceling rents and mortgages would include them as well. In fact, all debt should have been canceled the moment the banks and Wall Street received over $6 trillion in government bailouts in roughly 38 milliseconds after the quarantine was put into place. You have to wonder where that money went. And the answer is the pockets of the bank bosses, which are probably the worst kind of bosses around. And besides, corporate landlords got over $24 billion in assistance and bailouts on top of the additional money they got from tenants' rental assistance. So it's not like they're hurting for money here. With that being said, if instead of spending all that money on bailing out corporations that weren't in financial crisis when the pandemic began, and they spent it on pe giving people a, a UBI for a year, this evic eviction epidemic wouldn't have happened at all. If you gave everyone with a social security number about $1,500 a month for about a year, the government could could have would have spent roughly the same amount of money as they did bailing out the banks. It's the exact same amount, and this way, less people fall through the cracks of assistance. And the people who didn't need an extra fifteen hundred dollars could have either reinvested it or donated it to those that did need a little bit more help. And this is how real math works. They also could have made it a lot easier for tenants to get rental assistance. 
As of now, there were arbitrary deadlines to apply for rental assistance for tenants. Remember, corporate landlords and the banks just received their bailouts, no problem. The problem with this is the fact that most Americans work multiple jobs to make rent and pay their bills. This doesn't leave a lot of time to fill out forms and ensure that they meet random deadlines. After working two jobs, 12 hours, and dealing with everything life has to throw at you, ask yourself if paperwork is what you want to deal with at the end of the day. Now, don't forget, under capitalism, it's eight hours for work, two hours to sit in traffic, one hour for lunch, four hours to do more work, two hours for meetings, one hour for family, six hours for your second job, one hour of sleep, if you're lucky. It's a system that doesn't value the restorative power of recreation. And in all of that, where do you see time for paperwork? The only system that understands that is socialism. And besides, these arbitrary deadlines don't really work out when you might have a very quick, sudden change in your finances. Another solution the Biden administration and Congress could have implemented is increasing the minimum wage to help the working class. Now, this too would have been a Band-Aid measure if it wasn't done in tandem with canceling the debts during a global emergency. But in the past decade that this hasn't been met, uh, this minimum wage hasn't really gone up in the past decade at all, and every time somebody brings up the idea of increasing the minimum wage, it's met with propagandistic lies about increasing prices of various goods and services. But like I just said, the minimum wage has been stagnant for over decades, and the price of goods and services have been going up, and this includes rent. So that basically renders that argument moot. I mean, at this point, I'm not putting a lot of faith in a Congress that has cared more about its donors and the corporate elites than they do about the people that they're supposed to represent. I mean, at least that's what they tell us anyway, but a Princeton study tells us that they don't. They do, in fact, represent the interests of the rich. And a lot of people are calling evictions an act of violence. And this becomes a controversial statement, partly due to the blurry definition of violence. In order to perceive a crime as violent, either the offender or the act itself must per- fit into our preconceived notion of what violence means. Each state categorizes violence differently. Like in Texas, it's only violence if weapons are used outside of a duel. Right? In Florida, it's books. Just, just like any uh, book is considered an act of violence. In New York, anyone that isn't a Cuomo-sexual is a violent individual. You get it. You understand what I'm saying here. But it is a blurred line. Robbery is an act of violence whether there was a weapon or a physical altercation involved or not. Look, I'd say violence is any act that drastically affects your life negatively and creates a cycle of trauma. Homeless people get literally thrown in a cycle of trauma considering they have a higher likelihood of dying early and facing an increased amount of brutality from the general public and the police. They also face the brunt of the effects of climate change. Summers have become brutally hot and they don't have places to go get shade or water. And winters, winters are particularly bl- brutal. I mean, I live in, in a pretty nice place, and we have a pretty good heating system, and even I get extra cold in the winter. Sure, I lack the body mass of, of most humans, and I'm built like a twig, but, but, that, but that, does, that doesn't matter. That's, not, uh, you know, that, uh, that's, that's fine. But you get the point. The winters have been getting colder and they don't have these homeless people don't have a lot of places to go to warm up or feel safe from the brutal elements that are only getting worse due to climate change now recently in atlanta the unhoused in the city formed a union and presented demands to the city for housing clean water and a seat at the negotiating table when it comes to addressing solutions to this problem The police decided to arrest and displace the union encampment. And it's not like the union was asking for 
something outrageous, and neither were they threatening the politicians of Atlanta. In America right now, we have enough empty houses and properties to house the unhoused. And it's been proven that giving the homeless a home vastly improves their lives and helps them keep jobs, stay off drugs, and reduces abuses that they face. Besides, a lot of the unhoused people have jobs. Yes, jobs as in plural. The reason why our system doesn't consider evictions and homelessness as an act of violence is because the effects of the abuse aren't immediate. But in a lot of cases, they are. I mean, losing your home and your stuff is an immediate consequence. Just like robbery, your things are taken away through no fault of your own, and that's considered violence. In this case, the eviction is happening due to a global pandemic that affected people's income, and the government did virtually nothing to help the people, and people are losing their homes and their stuff, and that's not violence? I guess in capitalism, the only way an eviction is violence is if a landlord punches you in the chest on your way out, and then you fall down a flight of stairs. But eviction is the only crime where the victim is punished. The long and short of it is that capitalism is manufacturing a homeless crisis that the United States may not be able to come out of. And it boils down to the Sophie's Choice argument of people or profit. And capitalism will always choose profit and sacrifice people to achieve its goals. I mean, that's a pretty standard move for capitalism. And there are bold actions that can be taken on a legislative level that would help average Americans get their financial footing back, but that would involve corporations losing their ability to buy a second yacht. And if they don't have that, then how will the rich post their hot beach summer selfies? That has been your dispatch for this week. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you enjoyed this episode, please make sure that you hit the like button. Please make sure you are subscribed to the channel, to the podcast, uh, to make sure that you get updates. Uh, and uh, sharing is a big way that independent media succeeds and thrives, especially in an environment where most of the content we put up is, uh, is, is shadow banned or, or just outright censored by uh, the big check giants like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, you name it. So uh, please do, if you enjoy this, what I'm saying, the commentary that I'm putting out there, the comedy that I do, please do share that out with as many people as you possibly can. That uh, I've got my live virtual comedy shows back in action and the very last Friday of every single month. They happen at 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific. Tickets are $10, and every month it's a brand new show covering a brand new sociopolitical topic that you won't hear on corporate mainstream networks. And as a bonus, uh, some months you might get to hear a weird, quirky story from me related to the topic of discussion, or there might be a special guest joining the show. These are musicians, storytellers, comedians, activists, so on and so forth. Uh, they they will be uh, kicking off the show uh, with a with a set at the at the top, and then it'll lead right into the socio political commentary. Uh, and look, if ten bucks is a is a little bit too expensive, I totally understand. Shoot me a message or an email. And I will make sure that you get a ticket to come check out the show via Zoom. Uh, secondly, if you want to uh, financially contribute to the show and you are on stable financial ground, you can do so at slash donate That's k r i s h m o h a n h a h a dot com slash donate. The biggest way you can help is by becoming a sustaining member, make monthly contributions, uh, which means that you get free tickets to the virtual comedy shows that I just talked about and the live ones when the live ones come back. Uh, you also get early access to a certain Forkful of Noodles videos. You get to ask me questions, which I'll then respond to either in live streams, uh, standalone videos, or as a segment on the virtual comedy shows that I do, and then those will be released as premium exclusive of content just for the members uh you get uh addition bonus stand-up comedy and storytelling content so tons of things for becoming a uh sustaining member but if sustaining membership isn't in your cards you can also make a one-time donation as well and um i have now 
included a statement of transparency, which lets you know exactly what you're contributing to um, and what you're helping me uh, uh, achieve, what goals you're helping me achieve by becoming a sustaining member, by, by, by getting me one step closer to making this my full-time job again. It, 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 be doing comedy full-time and creating content full-time was my full, uh, was my job full, uh, pre-pandemic, but uh, because of the, the way the world is now, um, I'm unable to do that without, uh, without, the do without donations from you guys, from the people. And lastly, I want to mention that I do have a online merch store. That's right. I've got uh, t-shirts. I've got mugs, hoodies, you name it. It's there probably, kind of. Uh, but <laughs> it's available on my website, krishmohanhaha.com. Uh, it's the merch tab. And uh, there, all of the designs have been made by me. There's seven designs uh, on the site right now, but that's due to probably go up. I'll probably make newer designs and release them as, as, as time goes on. Um, but there's a Julian Assange shirt that's available right now, and I'm going to donate 100% of all of the profits made from that shirt to pro-Assange um, groups and journalists and activists uh people like action for assange right uh kevin gasola richard medhurst folks like that uh i'm gonna make my donations to them um so so if you want to help um you know people that are covering assange uh hit the spotlight a little bit more then then grab that shirt because i'm donating all of that to them uh, and last but not least, you can grab all of my stand-up comedy albums directly off of my Bandcamp at krishmohanhaha.bandcamp.com. My albums are available for a pay-what-you-want uh, price range on Bandcamp, but if you just want to listen to them and you don't want to, you know, have them take up room in your computer, I totally get it. Uh, you can also stream them off of Pandora. It's available on iTunes and, uh... uh you google play all of the all of the ways that you listen to music uh with all that said and done uh thank you guys for tuning into the show thank you guys for being regular listeners to the show i very much appreciate it and thank you to all the people that do donate irregularly and have become sustaining members because uh i wouldn't be able to continue doing this without you guys so you guys really make this uh possible and i am very 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 appreciative of that 